what's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another quick video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up a 1.18 craft bucket or spigot server. It's relatively simple and if you'd like to learn how to set up a fabric server or other 1.18 guides, do check the description down below for links to those. While there are ways to download the spigot or craft bucket server unofficially, as in you're not allowed to download the jar file usually, what you're supposed to do and the legal way of doing it is creating the jar file yourself for spigot or craft bucket by using an automated tool called build tools. This is the one that I'll be including in this guide as it's the only legal way of setting up your server. Head across to the build tools link in the description down below and on this page, simply click windows over here. Then you'll see a small guide of what you need to get things going. Don't worry too much, all you need are two programs, Git and Java. You'll find the link for Git right over here in yellow text and all you have to do is click download here. Then open up the exe file that's busy downloading, click install and wait for it to run through to completion. If this is your first time installing Git, you may see a whole bunch of pages that you need to click through, next, 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 etc. to eventually install the program. It's quite a long process, but it's definitely worth it as it's not too much of a hassle when it's done. You can untick this and click finish. Then you'll of course need Java installed. I'm running Java 17 on my computer, but as you can see, they require OpenJDK 16 or higher, which you can find a link to over here. Note that this is different to the normal Java install. You'll be taken across to azul.com slash downloads, for which you can click choose your download over here. Then choose Java version, whatever the latest is, in my case 17. Operating system, I'll choose Windows. Architecture, I'll choose 8664 bit. Leave Java package as JDK, and you'll see this over here. Simply click MSI on the right hand side to download the installer. Click on it to open it up when it's done downloading. And now we'll be setting up the open JDK. So click next. You can leave everything as is, although over here, change this X to will be installed on local hard drive, the first option. Then click next over here, install, and wait for it to run through to completion. Then click finish. Now scrolling down past prerequisites, we'll get to running build tools. Download buildtools.jar from here. So I'll click the link to download it and we get into a whole bunch of information which I'll quickly shrink up in this video here. Click keep on the jar file that we just downloaded and drop it into a folder in somewhere like your desktop. I'll call this a BT for build tools. Then I'll drag and drop the jar file into here. Now all we have to do is run a simple command. Over here you'll see optional on Windows create this batch file to automate the process. This is what we'll be doing. Select everything from the start to the finish here, right click copy, and inside of our folder where we have buildtools.jar, right click, new, and create a new text document. We'll now be changing this to say bt.bat and getting rid of .txt at the end, then confirming that we'd like to change the file name. If you don't see .text and you weren't given that prompt or the icon doesn't change, at the very top click view and then make sure that file name extensions is ticked. Then simply change it from .text to .bat. Right click and click edit or open it with notepad, paste this code in that we just copied and click Control S to save. Simply make sure that buildtools.jar over here is over here. So close out of this and double click the batch file here. Now, after it downloads a couple of files, all we have to do is enter a version. Having a look at the build tools page once again, scrolling down a little bit, by default, this program will produce not only craft bucket, but the spigot jar as well. We can choose to compile only one of them if we only want one of them. Scrolling down a little bit, you'll see all of the supported versions, all the way from latest, which is currently 1.17.1, to the rest of the numbers here, including 1.18. This is what we're interested in. So I'll minimize this and enter the version 1.18 here. If you'd like to only include craft bucket, add space hyphen hyphen compile space craft bucket, or of course spigot, which are both listed here. I'll only be using craft bucket, so I'll include this section here. Then simply hit enter and wait for this to run through to completion. Depending on the speed of your computer, this will take some time to go ahead and complete. Eventually, when it does complete, you'll see this text here. 
Press any key to continue, open the Build Tools folder, and you'll see craftbucket.jar or, of course, spigot.jar if you created that instead. If you suddenly change your mind after building only one of them, you can run bt.mat once again, and this time enter 1.18, this time with nothing after it, and hitting enter, it'll start building the spigot file as well. Though I'll cancel this out because I don't want to wait. Anyways, you'll find it in here when it's done building as well. What you want to do is take this craftbucket.jar that we just made and move it to another folder where we'll be hosting the server itself. Of course, this could be the spigot file as well. From now, whenever I refer to one, just understand that I mean one or the other. I'll create a folder called cb for craftbucket 1.18 and this is where I'll have my server. Of course, the file name isn't at all important. Dragging it across, we now have craftbucket 1.18.jar here. In order to actually get your server going, we need a server.bat. So right click in the folder here, a new text document, and I'll be calling this same server.bat. Note that I did get rid of .txt at the end, so the file type has changed. I'll right click and edit it, and we're now inside of a normal text editor. All you have to do is look in the description down below for this bit of text. Java, XMS, XMX, jar, spigot.jar, no GY. Simply make sure that this name over here matches the jar file over here. So either you can rename this to just spigot.jar or craftbucket.jar, or a better idea is to copy the name here and simply replace it inside of the text file as such, jar, craftbucket.jar, no GY. I'll go ahead and save this, but we're not done with this file just yet. You do need to change how much RAM your server is allocated. In order to figure out how much you should give it, hold Control Shift and Escape to bring up your task manager. Inside of here, head across to the Performance tab at the very top and look at the Memory section. In the top right, you'll see the total amount of RAM in your computer, and right below it, you'll see a graph as well as in use and available. Available is how much RAM isn't used on your computer and how much you're theoretically able to give your server. Do keep in mind though, that what you currently have in use is for normal background programs. You'll need to keep some available for Minecraft as well to run in the background, maybe web browsers and other things. And on top of that, you'll need a tiny bit of extra RAM available for your computer to run smoothly in the background. The rest of the remaining RAM after you've estimated how much that could be is what you can allocate your server. So it's usually a lot less than the total available on your computer as you'll be running the game and other things in the background. Because I have an absolutely ludicrous amount of RAM, I can change the starting amount, XMS, to say 4 gigs, and the maximum to say 8 gigs. Usually you don't need to include XMS, but it's there for those who like to include the starting amount. So I'll save the file now that we've given it 8 gigabytes of RAM, the capital G standing for gigabytes, or of course whatever you've given them on your computer. Save the file, close it, and simply open it up. Now a bunch of different files will generate, so we'll wait for this to complete and then press any key to continue. Open up the new eula.txt file here and change false to true. Save it and close it. Before we run that again, we can open server.properties here where we can customize our server settings, including MOTD and further down the server port. This is important to change if you're going to be running more than one server on your, on your computer. And of course, it's important to remember if you're going to be port forwarding later on. So I'll close out of this and run my server.bat once again. This time, more files will generate, folders, etc, etc. While the server is still generating, we'll have a look at the files here. We have a bunch of different configuration files, including bucket.yml, or of course, spigot.yml, etc, etc, that we can customize to further control our server. We also have a plugins folder here where you can drop craft bucket plugins, things like world edit, etc. For now, I'll be leaving this as is, as none of them have really updated for 1.18. Regardless, the server is now running and we're able to join it. All that you need in order to join a craft bucket server is a normal vanilla version of Minecraft, or of course, Optifine, etc, etc. Though currently Optifine isn't available, you'll find an install guide link in the description down below when it is. So I'll simply choose latest release 1.18, play. When you get to the main menu, click multiplayer and click add a server in the bottom right. For the server address, enter either localhost or 127.0.0.1. Click it done and you'll be able to join your own Minecraft server by double clicking on it. 
as you can see, the text on the left hand side in that black window updated, and we're now connected to our own craft bucket or spigot server. It's incredibly simple to get going, and of course your friends are immediately able to join you, but there are some extra steps required. If they're on the same Wi-Fi network as you, or Ethernet network, all they need is your computer's IP address to connect to you. Of course, you'll need to make sure that you have no third-party firewall or Windows firewall stopping your game server from breaching the internet. If they're outside of your local connection, however, you'll need to port forward your computer to the internet, meaning any communication that comes to your router regarding your server, port 25565 or whatever it is, will get sent directly to your computer. I have a port forwarding guide linked in the description down below that breaks it down really simply for anyone to understand. If you have more than one router, you have to port forward the outside router to the next one to the next one to your computer. That's all explained in that video. For a friend to join you that's sitting right next to you, or to get your computer's IP address to port forward to, hold start and press R to bring up this box here. Type in CMD, hit enter, and inside of here, type in IP config and hit enter once again. Scrolling up, you're looking for the way that you're connected to the internet. I'm connected through Ethernet Adapter Ethernet. The IPv4 address over here is the address of your computer on your local network. This is what people can use to connect to you if they're sitting next to you on the same Wi-Fi or cable network. If they're over the internet, you'll need to port forward your router to this address here, or of course your router to the next router to your PC here. It's really simple and broken down very well in that guide linked down in the description below. But regardless, that's really about it for this guide. Your server is now up and running. In order to actually save your server and close it, head across to this window over here and then type in save hyphen all, hit enter. This way the world, inventories, etc. will be saved. And when it's done and only when it's done, can you type stop and hit enter to close your server safely. This way, nothing will be corrupted and everything will be saved properly. Congratulations, you've now successfully set up your own Craft Bucket 1.18 or Spigot 1.18 server. Again, you'll find more guides linked in the description down below for 1.18. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno Behavior Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.